Hey, it's Justin Goff from Copy Accelerator. So I'm here with Tanner Henkel, uh, who is actually one of the first guys I ever mentored uh, when it came to copy. Uh, Tanner kind of went from knowing nothing about internet marketing, knowing nothing about copywriting, to making over six figures a year as an email copywriter. Um, and he's been doing this since, what, late 2017? Yeah, 2000, late 2017, yeah. Yep. So uh, we're going to chat a little bit today about kind of his journey and what he's learned so far. And he's going to share uh, how he's got clients um, and a bunch of the stuff he's learned from managing a uh, massive 1 million person email list uh, about what works, what doesn't when it comes to the email. So if you're interested in email marketing or if you're interested in writing emails as a copywriter, this is going to be a really good interview. So um, a little backstory. So Tanner and I met in late 2017. Um, he was really interested in making money online, but didn't really have any idea, uh, what to do. I'll, I'll let you kind of tell a little bit more of the story. Yeah, for sure. So you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Like I was working in retail. So I was a store manager at Abercrombie and Fitch and was pretty unhappy there. Just didn't really like the day-to-day -day grind of going to a nine to five or even worse, because I was there basically when the mall was open, which is like 10 to 10 kind of thing. So yeah, I just didn't like the day-to-day the -day grind of like not having any freedom, not being able to choose when I, I could go to work and really have the, the, probably the worst thing though was feeling like I had a cap on how much I could contribute and, and what I could do and, and how much I could earn. So it was like, I felt like I had a lot of stuff like I wanted to really do a lot more than like my current role was but I really had to like play the waiting game to try and like climb the the corporate ladder um so it's like a pretty bad spot to be in when like I wanted to do more and like contribute more but I couldn't really right. so I was like kind of like slow progress and then one day I just got pretty fed up with it all and and decided to quit and I didn't really know like what I wanted to do I didn't know I didn't even really know the extent to which it was possible to, to make money online or, or that there were people doing it like really successfully. Um, I didn't really know that's what I wanted to do, but I just knew I didn't want to do that. So I quit one day and just decided to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you're very similar to me in that way where it was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do either, but like I knew I kind of wanted to do my own thing and I knew yeah. I didn't want to have a boss. And I knew I wanted to have like a lot more freedom. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of people come from that place. So let's go back to kind of where, where you started. So I started teaching how to write emails. So actually, even go back before that, you were asking me how to make money online, I remember. Um, and you were like, kind of, what do you think I should do? Should I do affiliate marketing? Should I do drop shipping? Should I do, you had a couple different ideas. Um, and I was like, my plan was really, I was like, what can I teach you that you could start making money within like three months? what would be the simplest thing to learn? And at the time I was just like, I'm getting hit up all the time by business owners uh, who need email writers. So I was like, it's not that hard to write an email. Um, I could probably teach it to you in three months. Uh, let's start with email. And I remember, I don't think you really understood how big kind of like the email world is uh, or how much potential was there at the time. Yeah, no. Definitely not. I, I kind of thought that it was, it seemed like, oh, uh, just like a, like a, like a stepping stone. And instead of a whole kind of niche you can get into as a freelancer or as a copywriter and how you could be, you could essentially run a like freelance business in just an email marketing. Like it's definitely, there's that much opportunity there. Um, but no, I just kind of, trusted you and, and listened to what, to what you said. So I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. But um, I, was, I was already interested in being a writer, but I, would, I thought the only real path and the way to do that is to write like a Harry Potter type novel that becomes like a huge, massive success or, you know, the next great American novel, whatever that is. And, and that seemed kind of like daunting too. I didn't think you could actually just write something that simple and that easily and actually you know get get read by a lot of people and and just make a living that way so i mean that was probably like the first kind of thing and then you step it stepped into this whole world and really like saw how how 
big it is and how much opportunity there is. Right. So let's go back to, to kind of what um, the program I started you guys on. So I put a video on YouTube the other day that kind of outlined uh, the program that you and Alex started on. Um, it was pretty, pretty intense, two to three emails every single day. Uh, you guys had to write and then I was giving you feedback on them. Um, let's, what was that like kind of first starting out when you're just, you didn't really know shit about emails and I was just like, here's what, here's what you need to do. Uh, yeah. and just kind of like drilling it into you day after day. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty intimidating at first. Cause you're like, Oh, how am I going to come up with something new to say every day? And then if you're supposed to write two or three a day, it's like, shit, I got to think of three different things minimum to talk about to to send out which is like pretty pretty intimidating but i think it's one of those things like the more you, the more you do it and the more you practice it the more you you kind of build up that skill of like oh i could turn this into an email or this or this and then really the ideas kind of become become endless but also one of the things and, and since i've kind of been doing this more guys have started to ask me like how how did you get started and I tell them the same thing like started writing a couple emails every day but that's kind of the the first indicator of if you can actually if you if you're actually going to enjoy doing this or not because if you if you're not going to like writing emails for practice it's like well when you're going to do it for real it's the same thing you're going to you know, be writing a lot or, or sitting there kind of coming up with ideas and editing. And, and if you don't really like that process, you're not going to get very far. So it's like, it's a good way to kind of figure out if it's for you right away. And that was like, you know, it, w it was definitely tough at times when you write something and, and think it's good and then start, have to start all over again or, or just be like, oh, this isn't good. But, um, I mean, having you there kind of definitely helps because then I don't go down like, quickly can correct like the path that I'm on and, and do it in the right way and, and make changes like that. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that, that stands out to me a lot when I tell people about how to do this and how you guys kind of became successful writing emails, it really is a super simple process. It's not necessarily yeah. easy because it does take commitment. It takes daily work. It takes effort. Yeah. Uh, it's not something you're going to do tonight and then tomorrow be landing clients. Yeah. It does take three or four months to learn, um, but it is a very simple process, especially when you compare it to trying to learn how to write a 40 page sales letter or a video sales letter that's 50 minutes long. That's a very, very daunting task. And most people who are new, it's just way too above their head. Yeah, exactly. Like the, in uh, his book called On Writing, Stephen, Stephen King talks about the process of writing like an entire book. He's like, it's almost like trying to sail across the ocean in, in like a tiny little boat. There's just so much that can happen, so much going on. But writing an email is just that much more simple. It's like just walking across the street. It's like, it's not easy to do it right. But once you kind of figure it out, then, then you can do it. Just repeat like the process over and over. And re really too, the one thing I love about email is it really is direct response in a very like tight form. Because you learn everything about getting someone's attention, getting them to read, entertaining them, selling them. You learn what offers work. You learn what angles and hooks work, which ones don't. Um, it, is, it is like, like I said, it is direct response on a kind of, I don't, not even smaller scale, but just in a very like crunched down version. Yeah. Uh, because you see every single portion of hooks and stories and all that stuff that's actually working on sales pages and everywhere else in email. Yeah, exactly. I remember so that one of the first like talks you gave in, in one of the mentoring sessions where you're just kind of giving like a pretty broad overview of internet marketing in general. And you're talking about uh, Patriot Health Alliance and how you built that up to, you know, to whatever, 23 million in revenue. And you said that email was the lifeblood of the entire business. And I was like, Whoa, people still like use email. Like <laughs> I don't barely, you know, but it was pretty eye opening. And then I thought about it more and you said, yeah, well think about it. Like your grandma's got an email, your parents have email, your cousins who are like 15 years old probably have an email. Like not everyone has an Instagram the same way they have email. So you're just able to reach so many more people. 
I seem to know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's actually something I've had to kind of adjust my thinking on too, because to me, email is so normal because I'm checking email all the time, sending email yeah. all the time. But someone who's 22, email is very different. Yeah, true. Um, but it's also though, like email is so attached to work and that anybody who has a job is going to have an email address. Like exactly. Facebook's not replacing that anytime soon. Instagram's not replacing that anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, so email still, I, I feel like is going to be the king for a, a while. Um, all right. So let's go back to when you were writing the emails in the beginning. Um, what, what do you feel? What do you feel like you actually like struggled with? If you can remember that. Yeah, I think um, I would have a tendency to kind of write these long emails that would just meander a bit. So it would, it would have more than just like one point, one big idea, one kind of message to it. It might, I might think I had to overcomplicate things and like add, oh, I got to put two or three things in this email to make it like worthwhile. But in reality, it, a lot of the times it's the simpler message that that gets consumed and then people buy from that or or just it's more shareable more relatable more uh just more like a bite-sized thing instead of like this long giant email. yeah so that was probably like one of the big like turning points for me was just kind of realizing like oh this is doesn't have to be as hard as i'm trying to make it yeah now that you bring that up i remember that a lot a lot of your emails it was like 60 percent of it was good and then there was like this other 40 cent percent we just had to whittle away <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And once we got rid of that, they became a lot tighter and a lot, they flowed a lot better. And yeah, that, that was definitely a big thing. Um, let's look at, so you got your first client. How long was it after you started writing that you got your first client? It was in, so I started practicing and getting kind of your feedback, just writing emails in late 2017. And then February, March was when I got my first client. Okay. So probably Actually, let's, 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 before we go to the client thing. So before you did that, you came and visited me in Austin. And then yeah. that's when I told you that I was like, if you're like serious about this, you should move to Austin. Yeah, uh, exactly. Let, walk, walk us through kind of how that happened and what your thoughts around it were. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, I, I was coming from the, the corporate world, right? Where it's kind of like, okay, you're in this low level position for the first two or three years. And then if you work really hard and you, kind of out hustle everyone, you'll move up to this position. And then in, you know, three, four years total, you might be making close to six figures. And it was like, kind of like that timeline was there and there's nothing you could do to like circumvent that. And then when I met you, you were like, yeah, you could probably be making like 10 grand a month. So over six figures within whatever, six months, or as soon as you start getting like good enough, essentially. So I was like, Oh, no one's ever told me that a, I could, do that that quickly so i was like oh maybe i should just like go all in on this on this like copywriting email copywriting thing because that's like life-changing money for me you know and just kind of like i was enjoying doing it so i was like wow it seems like it would really really make sense to to do that and i had already kind of quit my i had already quit my job so i was like well now's the time to to go all in on that and i was also kind of like it makes a lot more sense for me to be surrounded by you as in someone who's already done it and then also a community of people who have already done it or at least in the space and and more supportive and just talking about it all the time versus like me sitting in my apartment in toronto where i was living at the time just by myself like trying to figure it out on, on my own like in my roommate like going to his job every day like what is this guy doing like just sitting in his room <laughs> writing emails like, well, what even, he doesn't have the first clue like what I was doing but so it was it was easy for me to see how like beneficial it would be and how if it, I was really it, it pretty quickly I realized this is something I want to do and then I was just willing to to commit to it like 100 percent I mean that's a big point I want to make there is because a lot of people um a lot of people get opportunities in front of them like that and don't take them and you were yeah not only did you take it, but it was like probably 10 days after that, you like literally packed up everything and moved from Toronto to Austin. And like yeah. Didn't yeah. look I had, back. To go, I had to go back and forth a bit just cause there's a lot of like logistical stuff you got to deal with. But yeah, I was like, okay, I'm all, all in pretty quickly on that. 
Yeah, I mean, that was, it was obviously paid off and it was a really smart decision. Um, okay, so, so let's go back to the, your first client. So you got yeah. your first client, you said three or four months after you started? Yeah, probably, yeah, three or four months after I started, which looking back now, it seems like nothing to learn, to be good enough to, for someone to hire you and start making them money on their email list. But at the time, I remember it was just like, it was kind of not frustrating, but it was just like a lot of doubt. Like, am I, can I actually do this? Is this going to work out for me? Am I going to eventually turn the corner and start getting paid to do this instead of just, you know, doing it in your living room? for uh with like the the hope that one day that that would happen so you know there was a lot of of that there but once yeah. once i kind of got the first client that's really it changes everything once you get one client it's way easier to get two or three or however many you kind of want well the first the first time you make money too is when it becomes real yeah exactly because you still i bet up until that point didn't truly 100 percent believe that this was going to happen. Yeah, no. You're like, I'm, I'm trusting you because you say it's going to happen, but yeah. I don't really, yeah. deep in my core, I don't really believe that like I'm going to be making six figures doing this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, that's definitely a big point. Getting, getting that first client is definitely the hardest. Uh, like you said, getting the second one's much easier, getting the third one's easier, and then you can kind of yeah. level up to where you can kind of get rid of the lower end clients that maybe you started with and then start working with bigger and better clients who, who pay you more, yeah. and, uh, give you a lot more opportunity. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's, uh, so you got your first client, who was it? What'd they pay you and kind of what were you doing for them? Um, so it was a guy named Adam Folker who's in like, he's in a pretty specialized niche. He has basketball, training products which are like his main flagship offer is like teaching teenagers how to dunk which is pretty cool and it's a pretty good pretty appealing offer for guys in that in that niche which was a good fit for me because i'm like really into sports i like basketball so it was easy for me to write those emails um he paid me i think 75 bucks an email and i was writing five a, a week for him and so it was like I don't know what that works out to like 1500 bucks a month. And I was kind of like, at first I, I wasn't let down because I was really happy to have my like first client, but I was going to be like, Oh, I thought I would only have, you know, one client paying me to, to do this. And then I kind of figured, well, um, I can probably get to, you know, at least four or five grand a month, which is like, I'm making a living off of this, like pretty quickly. Like I can see how this will add up quickly. It's like, I've got 1500 bucks from, from Adam for the month to write what 20 emails. And then I still have a lot of free time so I can take on at least a couple more clients and like kind of piecemeal my way to that instead of like having to make it all up in one shot. So I was like, Oh, okay. That's, that's a way, way to do it for me. Like at the start too, I was like, oh, okay, this is, I can get to like four or five grand a month pretty quickly. And then that's even like, you know, I don't have to take a second job like bartending or drive an Uber or anything. Like I can make a, a living at this pretty quickly, which is like another, so you've got your first client, which is like a big milestone and then your first sale. And then kind of like realizing like you can make a living off of this was like another one for me that yeah. this all happened like pretty quickly. I was like, Oh, okay. Who, uh, I honestly don't remember. Who was your second client? Do you remember? Um, I started the second, like big client I got was, uh, well, I was doing some stuff for Patriot for Patriot health clients. And that was pretty They were giving me pretty like consistent work for probably maybe like a year. Um, so they were probably like my second. And then I started working with a guy named George Rivera. So I started doing like running, running his list, which was like my, definitely like my biggest, he was just starting up in an email and I probably uh, helped him out in like the spring of that year, like March or April sometime. And then, so then I started like, that was, that was a bigger role for me because it was like my first exposure to like, you're going to write an email every day and send it out. Whereas Adam, I was just like sending him a Google doc being like, here's five emails, like, let me know what you think, I'll make edits, blah, blah, blah. But this was different in that, like, okay, now I'm running the list, looking at the data a bit, 
figuring out what to message every day and, and that. How big, uh, you made a really important point there, kind of looking at the, the data that comes in from the stuff that goes out. How big of a change was that for you to be able to actually see how the emails were performing? Yeah, that was kind of my big, like I was getting more clients and I wasn't really seeing the data up until I started working with George. And then I was like, oh, wow, like the stuff I'm writing is actually selling stuff. Like I assumed it was before because Adam kept paying me every month. So I assumed it was doing well enough and he kept sending out my emails but I never really knew like how many sales it was making specifically. So then when I started seeing the, the data with, with George a little bit, I was like, Oh, okay, this is real. Like this is, you know, I'm sending one email and making thousands of dollars for, for his business. And then also kind of get it starting to understand like this works better than this type of subject line, this type of email works better than this type. Um, and try starting to, get familiar with the list, which is then when you, when you see that data, it's like changes everything. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge thing that, um, I always tell beginning copywriters, if you're writing for clients, if you write for clients for 10 years and you never see the data, yeah. you're almost still in the same spot you were 10 years ago because you don't know what works and what doesn't work. And you don't yeah. know all the little nuances to, subject lines and the stories that work and uh fear stories that work and the pain stories that work like yeah. you don't know any of that yeah uh, exactly so yeah like the be literally the best thing you could do in your first year or two is write for someone that's give letting you see all the data you're kind of managing stuff uh because if you came out of that first year or that first two years knowing everything that works and everything that doesn't work it really doesn't even matter how much money you made writing those like you have the knowledge now yeah to, you could go write for anybody else uh and make way more money you could go start your own email you, you could do whatever there's a lot of stuff you could do at that point yeah so yeah working with george was kind of like my first my first taste of that and understand starting to understand like how important it is i guess and then in that was like i said spring sometime in the summer you you hooked me up with uh mark from natural health sherpa and then Mark was like a data nut. So I was reading data like all the time, which was great. And, you know, getting feedback from him and we were just, he, he wanted, um, he wanted to turn around emails like fast. So that's where my training of like writing two or three a day paid off because I was used to writing two or three a day. I've been doing it for months. It wasn't like, God, oh, just write one at one a day or whatever. So when Mark's like, yeah, write three email, emails by tomorrow, I was like, okay, I'm training six months for this, I'm ready. <laughs> and then uh, he, he was like uh, sharing the data and, and just really helping me understand it too. Cause you know, at first when I was, I was that new, just looking at a spreadsheet is, I, I can kind of figure out, but the more you do it, the more you can kind of see the trends and the patterns. And that's a lot of what it is, excuse me. Is like yeah. pattern recognition. That's like a big part of it. That that is uh, basically determines what you just said of like what works and what doesn't. Well, yeah, it's interesting too because like in the affiliate space, you'll hear hear from other people like, "Oh, this offer is crushing it to our list. Like you should mail for it." Yeah, uh, and it's like my list and your list might be completely different. Exactly. You might have a fitness oriented list. I might have a diet oriented list. And they're going to respond very differently. Yeah, they, but they seem similar on the surface. You think like, oh, okay, these are people who want to lose weight, but they're completely different. Yeah. They could be, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So that you kind of just talked about when you started working with Natural Health Sherpa. Um, they are a member of the Copy Accelerator Mastermind and put a bunch of the employees in our program, including you. Yeah. Um, what are some of the big things you've, you've learned from, so just give everybody an idea. Sherpa is a huge, huge player in the health space. They're sending out over a million emails every single day. Yeah. Um, they test relentlessly. Uh, as Tanner said, they are driven by data. Um, Mark and Jeff who run the company are two of the smartest marketers I know. Um, what have you kind of learned from sending out that many emails, testing that many subject lines, testing, hundreds of different offers. What's some of like the big things you've learned? Yeah, for sure. So I think the biggest one is just that testing really is king 
I, I could write, if I can write four emails and then split test the subject lines and write the, the from name and test the from names. And I, if I can do all, run all those tests, um, it doesn't matter who is writing the copy. Eventually I'll be able to test into what works. So it's like, you could have the best copyright in the world or someone who has access to, to all this data and testing. And then quick, pretty quickly, I'm going to be able to figure out what works versus, you know, Sure, a great copywriter may be able to hit it out of, the, out of the park right away, but if you can just test and test and test, then you, you figure out like what gets there. So it's like, I, I was telling someone the other day, it's like, you don't really write, a great email most of the time isn't just like born, it's made through testing. So it's like, I'll write an email, split test the actual copy, split test the from name, split test the subject line, and then at some point, we'll get to an email that can, we can run for, you know, a year plus, but it's not just, it's not just like one day I just wrote one email and then it worked great to the, the list. Like sometimes it happens like once in a while, but most of the time it's just through testing and like literally grinding away and finding like the specific messaging that works. And then, you know, we're, we're able to run an email like for, like I said, for a year, a year plus. So I'd say that's like the kind of the big realization there um additionally also great even that even the test being able to test like that you're not going to overcome a, a good offer or a, bad, a poor offer so it's like if we have a list that is, is a diet list and these people came in from a, a meal eating plan or whatever a lose weight type of, of eating program those people are always going to respond better to a, a meal program than a fitness program or something like that. So it's like really understanding like what offers work to the list is going to kind of overcome any, um, there could be, you know, you, your copy doesn't have to be as good. Like obviously it helps if, if it is, but if you have a really strong offer, is going to overcome a lot of those kind of deficiencies, those other deficiencies. And then you can obviously make up for it with, with testing too. So, so those are probably like two of the bigger ones, like how important the offer selection is and then really chipping away with, with testing versus trying to hit, expecting to hit a home run out of the park on like the first shot. Yeah. I mean, those are two really good points. Uh, and they, they actually echo kind of what I teach in terms of creating offers that really good offers are, um, kind of put together and patched together and just tested. They're not, yeah. the odds of you putting out a brand new offer and it just hits a home run right away are very slim. When yeah. it happens, it's great. Um, I've had some happen. I mean, it's awesome, but <laughs> it, uh, it's more of a unicorn. Like that's good offers that are, you see are crushing. Like those have been tested for six months, 12 months to kind of get to where they are. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's a big part. And I 100% agree with you too, that the no amount of good copy can overcome the wrong offer. Yeah. Um, the better offer, the better the congruence of the list to the offer, um, it's good. You could have a C-level copywriter writing the copy and it's going to make more money than Gary Bensavanger writing something that's <laughs> the wrong fit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a big thing. So what, one question I actually want to ask you, so you, you've, you've stepped up a lot in terms of um, kind of where you started, how much you were charging with clients um, and kind of the results you're delivering now. Cause like you were writing kind of like one off emails for people in the start. Now you're managing a massive email list. What are some of the struggles you've kind of run into like personally in terms of, has there been anything in terms of like, um, the workload maybe being too much or you not feeling like you're able to handle this much stuff because you're still kind of new at this. Like I'm curious what kind of like roadblocks and kind of emotional uh, roadblocks you've run into. Yeah. I mean, um, so I started with Sherpa in probably 2018 as just like in a, in a freelance basis. So I was still taking like one off, one-off projects and like writing one-off emails. But um, I don't re remember exactly what made me do it. It was just that 
it was a pretty good fit to be working with them. And I, again, I kind of recognized like the opportunity I was getting a lot more feedback than I was with, with other clients. Um, they were turning around and like sending my stuff out like right away, which was cool. Um, so I, yeah, I just really, I liked working with them. And like you said, they were really like smart, really smart marketers. I remember we were at your event in your first, the first event you had beat your control in, in Austin and Jeff and Mark talked like all weekend. They were sharing all this stuff. I was like, wow. Okay. And this was, I was still kind of like freelancing with them at the time. And I was like, Oh yeah. Like I should definitely be around these guys more. Like they know their stuff inside and out and backwards. So I was like, yeah, these, these guys know, know what's, what's up. Um, so yeah, I just started, uh, kind of wanted to start working with them more and more and more. And then we, we went on from like a, pay per email type basis to like a retainer and I was able to kind of cut back the one-off jobs um and then sometime towards the end of 2018 I was working really closely with Mark like back and forth getting lots of feedback he'd like edit everything that I wrote I write and and um he would he would ultimately make the the send decision of like what email would go out with what subject lines and what offer on what days and then one day in like January of 2019 so after like four or five months of being with them um, he was like oh yeah okay you're gonna start doing this now and there wasn't really like you know a onboarding period where I like worked with him and he told me how he did it I was just kind of like thrust into it and then so that emotionally was was challenging because I, all of a sudden I went from sending stuff for, to him to edit and him to send out. So kind of like getting that like stamp of approval to now like my copies going right out to a million people. And I was like, Oh no, like, I don't want to write like a, you know, what if I put like a typo or <laughs> I say something that in there, like that's just a nightmare, you know? So at first it was like a lot of like just reading stuff, like way too much, even like over editing almost where I was like trying to make sure everything's like perfect because I know this is going to get sent out and it just put a, a lot of, of pressure to like make it really, really good, which, you know, you, you want, you obviously want it to perform well, but like putting too much pressure for it to, to be, to write like the perfect email to send out is just like, it's, it's counterproductive in a lot of ways. So that was definitely like a big, big emotional thing to, to come over and then to overcome and, and, at first when I kind of like took over the list and then, you know, it's still like, still a, there is, it, it, it is, a, you go from like just a freelance writer who's like sending emails to running the, the email program. And like you're suddenly responsible for the performance and selecting the offers and, and writing the copy, picking the subject lines, like all that stuff. So reflection of you. So there's more like pressure to it for sure. Right. You know, but that's also like what I wanted and what I, signed up for so right yeah um so let's look at um i'd be curious so there are probably people watching this who are probably interested in getting into email writing email based on what you've learned over the last two and a half three years what would you say would be the first step somebody should do so first like i said earlier it's definitely try, try writing a couple emails a day. So pick a product off ClickBank and I'll get to more in that in a second, but just pick a product. Even it doesn't even have to be off ClickBank, just a product you see advert and start writing, um, emails about it. This is my connection to the stable. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you're good. All right, cool. Um, so start writing like a couple emails a day because that's going to tell you, do you like sitting in front of your computer and, and writing? Like that's going to be a big part of your, of your career if you choose to do this. And then you're going to, it's going to kind of force you to come up with, with ideas and, and you'll get better at it as you go. And then I would say also once you're kind of used to it and you're like, yeah, you're writing a few emails, you've done it for, you know, a few weeks or a month and, and you're, you're comfortable with it. I, I would say try different niches and different, products not to to like kind of challenge yourself a little bit to come up with different ideas and, and different things to write about but also to see what you like 
because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I want to write in health or weight loss or whatever, because it's just such like a mega niche. Like there's so many, so much of, of uh, health stuff out there, but it's like, there's a lot of other, other niches out there too, where there's a lot of opportunity even to be like, a, to be like the, the writer in, you know, a smaller niche. It's like yeah. you're, a, you're a bigger fish in a smaller pond and maybe you enjoy those other niches better. So it's like, it's like figuring out if you like it and then what you like about it and trying, trying different things. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing. Like I always wrote health stuff. Um, I wrote yeah. some survival stuff. Um, but I never wrote any financial stuff just cause it never appealed to me. It, it was yeah. just kind of boring to me. I didn't, none of it ever really just, I don't know, not my brain doesn't work that way. It wasn't that interesting to me. Yeah. Um, survival stuff. I love writing cause there's all these like weird conspiracy angles and like yeah. all kinds of fear and anger and a lot of emotional stuff you can use in copy. Uh, health for me, kind of like you is kind of like a, a hobby of mine. So, uh, and I mean, I'm really into health stuff, so it kind of flows pretty naturally. Um, a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely agree trying to figure out exactly like which one, which one you, what niche you would actually really enjoy writing is, is probably one of the first steps. And then, like you said, really just getting to it and writing, uh, yeah. there's no, there's no substitute for writing every day. Yeah, no. I mean, people people always ask about like, how long will it take me to be a good copywriter? Or how do I be a good copywriter? And I tell them the answer that they don't want to hear, which is you need to write every single day. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, and like you said, if you don't enjoy writing every day, you probably should not be a copywriter. Go, yeah, exactly. Go learn how to do media buying or go learn how to do something else where you can make money because being a copywriter is about writing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I remember I was like, uh, I'd probably been in Austin for a couple of weeks or maybe a month at this point. And I was like, so what do you think is the, the fastest way for me to, to do this and like start getting clients? And I was expecting you to say, so, I don't know why I expected this, but I, I was expecting you to tell me like, I'll oh, read this book or do this thing. And then you're like, just write every day. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that's a boring answer. I'm already doing that, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> I've always so uh, it's true. Yeah, I mean Gary Halbert always had the uh people would always ask him how to become a good copywriter and he came up with the answer which was hand copy uh really good sales letters every single day. Part of me honestly thinks he gave that answer because the real answer that he would be telling people is not an answer they'd ever want to hear. Right. That one actually sounds somewhat like palatable uh whereas like yeah, grind for three hours a day for three years and then you'll be a mildly decent copywriter. It's not <laughs> yeah. a proposition that people are actually interested in hearing. Uh, yeah. That's the cool thing about email because it's, you can get really damn good at email very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and you yeah. can just hit that kind of minimum threshold of like, okay, I'm good enough to take on clients. I don't know, three months, four months. Uh, yeah. That's not really possible in a lot of, lot of other uh, things when it comes to copy. And the good thing about email too is you, is each email is short, so you're moving on to a different a different email, a different idea, fleshing something else out. You know, every every thirty minutes or hour, like okay, let's write something else. Let's write something else. It's not like you're working on the same thing over and over and over and trying to like smooth out this giant sales letter. It's like kind of fresh ideas is more snappy and quick, a little bit a little bit more like fun and energetic to write. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, you're, you can pack like a, a very interesting story or a really like cool hook into, I don't know, five paragraphs as opposed yeah. to trying to write 10 pages of that same story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else, I guess, advice wise, let's say someone's watching this, who's thinking of, of getting into email or maybe sees, all right, I could probably start writing some emails. What, what if you got one more, um, bit of advice. Let's hear it. Yeah, for sure. So like, you, like we, we, we've hit on like the ride every day, uh, a lot, but more, I think, um, so kind of one idea I had that I think was wrong or just, I, I kind of changed the way I, I thought about it was once I started getting clients, like I said, at first I was like, Oh, okay, I'm gonna, 
get one or two clients and that'll, that'll like, co I'll be covered. But it was more like, it was more piecemeal at, at the start. And that too is another, another step where you're kind of figuring out what it's like working with, with clients. So it's like, you're trying out a few different people to see if it's a good fit on both sides. Like, do you like working for them? Do they like working with you? Does it like work on, on both sides? So that's why I think it's important to write for like different clients and potentially different niches at art. So you figure out what you like, but then for me, and this kind of happened naturally, I wasn't doing this uh, on purpose. I was like, oh, okay, I, I like working with the Sherpa guys. So I'm going to go almost, you know, full time with them. And, and, uh, you know, I was still writing like 20 emails a month for Adam. So like a small, small jobs, but I, I basically kept the ones I liked and that made up all all my income like one of the guys in the in the copy accelerator group was like talking about this mat like he wanted to create a system for like all his these clients that he wants to have and i was kind of like well I, i've been thinking about it in a different way where it's like i would just want to have like two or three clients max that are like a really good fit instead of trying to keep track of you know 20. so for, for me that was kind of like figure, first figuring out like who I, who I like working with and, and what, what niches I like to be in and then like whittling it down from there so that you have like just a couple instead of a ton. So what, one of the things that I'm sure people are going to have questions about this, like actually getting clients because yeah, uh, for you, it was obviously a lot easier. I introduced you to clients. Um, yeah. You didn't have to go kind of cold email them or try to hunt them yeah. down. Um, but I know you've definitely seen the, the power of meeting people in person at live events. Oh yeah. Uh, and how much to, uh, to me, it's my number one strategy that I tell copywriters in terms of getting clients. Uh, there's no other way, there's no other place that you're going to be in a room with a bunch of people running 10, 20, 50, hundred million dollar businesses and actually be able to get their attention for yeah. 10 minutes undivided. Uh, you're not getting that through email. You're not getting that calling them. You're not even getting that if you get a referral to them from someone and you're trying to reach out. I mean, it's, to me, it's live events. Um, and I, I want to, one of the things you got, you guys did really well, uh, you and Alec, I think in the beginning was like, uh, multiple times when I held, like when I held my beach control event and when I held my, uh, the mastermind that I hold at TNC every year, uh, I asked you guys just to come help. Like you weren't getting paid. You weren't, you were just there to listen and to hand out forms and <laughs> basically be the guinea pig for the weekend. Yeah. But you were in a room with 15, 20 people who all had the potential to hire you. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't really seek out those opportunities. Like well, what, that's something I tell a lot of people who are like, if you're hungry and you don't have any connections, use what you have and then offer to do a bunch of stuff like for free. So, I'll, this guy's running a mastermind. Hey, I'll basically be your bitch for the whole weekend at the mastermind, get everything done that you need. I'll run and get you coffee. I'll do whatever. I just want to be in the room. Yeah. Uh, we had a guy at our last event uh, do that who reached out to me from my email list and was like, Hey, if you need any help, uh, I'm super like motivated, blah, blah, blah. I can't afford the tickets to the event, but I'll come work for the whole event for free. Uh, I'll fly out on my own dime. And I was like, sure. Yeah. Like, Great job. Yeah, I would agree. A hundred percent. It's just so much easier to, to connect with someone. Even if you are a good fit with them, if you're just emailing them, you just don't really know the same way you do when you're hanging out in, in person with them. So obviously that's like a great, great strategy. And I would even take it a step further is like, if you can, and if you, if you, if you're going to work together, you think there's like potential there, I would try to set up the deal in person when you're there it's be like oh okay let's like grab a coffee and just talk about it now or tomorrow before like every before you go back because you probably have heard this from people in copy accelerator um you know once everybody goes back from the event it's kind of like back to normal life there's now even more they're already they're already busy business owners but now they've just taken four or five days off now there's even more on their plate more people reaching out to them being like hey we talked to the event let's blah 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 but if you're like, oh, let's like kind of set this up now so we can both hit the ground running when we get home, I think that's even like a better, better strategy. 
too. But yeah, to, to, to kind of hit on what you said about like um, just doing whatever you can to get in the room. I mean, that's, that's definitely a great idea. And I mean, I, I, that was a, a part of the reason I moved to, to Austin too, is like, I knew that I was going to get opportunities like that and just would, would, you know, be willing to, to put myself in that situation in, in exchange for whatever you want for free labor or whatever. It's just like, it's, when, when you think of it that way, if you get one client from that, or even just a good, a good relationship or a connection, then it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I remember one thing I want to share. Um, when I originally shared your story in on a Facebook post, uh, somebody responded to it and it was like, basically asking if I thought you would have had the success you had, had you not had me mentoring you. Um, and I was like, obviously he would not have gotten to the same place as quickly as he did. Yeah. Um, I, I do think you would have eventually gotten there. Uh, it would have been slower, obviously. Yeah. Um, but that really is like shows a lot of though the power of having a good mentor. Um, it's something to me personally, like I was very resistant to it for so long. I remember people like pitching me on mentorships uh, when I was starting out and like signing up for coaching with them or signing up for their mastermind. And I was so against it because I was just like, this guy's just talking about mentorship and trying to sell me on the idea of it because he's trying to sell me into his fucking mastermind. And like, I was like, I can figure this out on my own. And the more I've done this, the more I've, I've really just realized like you, it, you get a huge ROI when you, yeah. when you pay to have somebody mentor you. Like you guys have what, seven, eight employees in the copy accelerator group. Like that's yeah. like, like Mark and them are paying for that, but it's well over six figures. Um, the ROI they've gotten out of that though is massive uh, yeah. because Stefan and I have trained a bunch of your, you guys' team to really become pretty damn good at conversions and direct response and copy and stuff like that. And I mean, the same with me, like when I um, signed up to coach under David Deutsch for like two years, that was $25,000 per year, which at the time was a really big amount of money to me. But my income also went from like 200,000 a year to 2.2 million a year. So like <laughs> you make that trade all day. I was saying that to Alec the other day. I was like that. I was like, wow, that was really a big turning point for Goff was when he got mentored by, by David Doig. Like it seems like things really change for you then. Yeah, it was, it was, it was huge. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to even put into words how big it was. Cause that's like a, 10 X bump in income yeah. which is pretty insane. Yeah. Um, and I had been like, I, like I obviously wasn't like struggling. I was making 200 grand a year, but I was also like stuck at 200 grand a year for like four years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I wasn't going to get any higher kind of on my own. And probably my biggest issue was my copy just wasn't good enough. And that's kind of what changed everything when I started working with him. Yeah. Uh, that's very similar though to what we see in the copy accelerator group too. Like, yeah. Uh, people's copy just gets so much better uh, from having the feedback from, from Stefan and I. Oh yeah, for sure. Cool, man. So we're going to wrap this up. Any uh, departing words, any final advice? I don't know. I think we covered it all. All right. <laughs> um, if anybody watching this wants to get into touch with you, what would be the easiest way to do that? Oh, they can just email me. So my email is my name, Tanner Henkel at gmail.com. Cool. Make sure to spam them and send them all kinds of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of emails he doesn't want. Uh, cool, man. So very glad that you came on to do this. We, I think we shared a bunch of good stuff. That's going to help a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you, man. Appreciate it. Anytime. My pleasure. All right. Later. All right. See ya.